Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The opposition-controlled Senate continues to stall the ratification of Poland's national recovery plan, which will have to be ratified before Poland can start receiving money from the European Union Recovery Fund, from which 770 billion złoty is earmarked for the country. The Senate now wants to add a preamble to the document that is to be ratified. Yesterday, the Senate Budget and Public Finance Committee and the Foreign Affairs and European Union Committee passed the preamble to the ratification bill, which reads, The authorities of the Republic of Poland undertake that the resources of this fund will be spent on the basis of the principles of justice, transparency and the rule of law, with the guarantee of equal treatment of entities interested in the implementation of projects. This preamble defines the principles under which the Polish Parliament accepts the adoption of the fund. We say this money must be fairly spent and that it must be an engine for growth in the Polish economy. According to Law and Justice MPs, such action is a deliberate delay to the adoption of a law necessary for the mobilization of resources from the reconstruction fund. The Civic Platform Party, which did not support this law in the same, is looking for a way out of this situation. Now it is making up such legislative monsters as the preamble. The preamble also contains a sentence about setting up a monitoring committee controlled by the opposition that would, among other things, control the spending of funds from the National Reconstruction Plan. The bill will most likely be passed at the next session of the Senate. I think that on the evening of the 27th, our bill will go back to the same. An extraordinary session of the same will most likely be convened a day later to vote on the Senate's amendments to the ratification bill. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken has released a statement which confirms recent media reports claiming that the White House will not extend sanctions placed on the company behind the Russo-German gas pipeline Nord Stream 2. Despite President Biden's earlier criticism of the pipeline, the White House is now willing to issue concessions in an attempt to improve relations with Germany and Russia. The decision of the Biden administration not to extend sanctions on the company building the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline was announced by Secretary of State Antony Blinken in an official State Department statement. I have determined that it is in the national interest of the United States to waive the application of sanctions on Nord Stream 2 AG, its CEO Matthias Varnig, and Nord Stream 2 AG's corporate offices. Treasurer's Office of Foreign Assets Control also anticipates issuing guidance allowing for the continuation of various transactions and activities involving the Marine Rescue Service that are unrelated to Nord Stream 2 construction, including on a range of search and rescue, environmental and other missions. The United States is giving the authorities in Berlin and Washington three months to resolve the long-standing dispute. President Biden's new stance was received well by Germany's foreign minister. There is a presidential waiver for Nord Stream 2 and its president, who is a German citizen. We see this as a constructive step, which we are happy to discuss further with our partners in Washington. During yesterday's press briefing, representatives of the State Department gave assurances that the Biden administration maintained strong opposition to the Russian project. The sudden change in stance on sanctions came in connection with the first meeting between Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The Kremlin cannot hide its satisfaction with the news. The fact that such reports appear is in itself very positive. It is much better to read about it than about new sanctions. United States allies in Central Europe, including Poland, are dismayed by the decision. Law and Justice MEP and former Foreign Minister Witold Waszczykowski argues that it contradicts President Biden's campaign promises in which he gave assurances that he wouldn't repeat the Obama administration's mistakes and that he would remain firm against Russia. It is a disappointing decision because, as we can see, another American administration does not learn from the mistakes of its predecessors and begins its relations with Russia with concessions. Here in Brussels, we are convinced that Putin will not satisfy himself with this gesture, but will expect more and that those demands will concern our part of Europe. The United States' decision is a shift towards improving relations between Berlin and Washington, which was strained under Donald Trump. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky warned today that Russia's increased practice of issuing Russian passports to residents of eastern Ukraine constitutes a first step towards the annexation of the region. He also added that not enough has been done by Russia to pull back the troops it has amassed at the Russia-Ukrainian border in recent weeks. 
The Ukrainian president told the press that issuing passports was one of the methods Russia used when it annexed Crimea in 2014 and warned that the scenario could be repeated yet again if the world doesn't do more to support Ukrainian independence and the inviolability of the country's borders. It is definitely the first step because the same thing happened once in Crimea when Crimean residents were given Russian passports. And it is a very big problem. Russia's TASS news agency quoted official sources as saying that more than 527,000 Russian passports had been handed out in Donbass since April 2019. Ukrainian authorities have said that the alleged need to protect these passport holders can be used as an excuse or a pretext for possible open aggression against Ukraine by Russia. Relations between Moscow and Kiev collapsed after Russia annexed the Ukrainian region of Crimea in 2014, and Russian-backed separatists took control of a chunk of eastern Ukraine that same year. Tensions have flared again in recent months after the two countries traded blame for an uptick in fighting in eastern Ukraine, and Russia, in what is called a defensive exercise, massed troops on its western border with Ukraine and in Crimea. We observe a very slow decrease in the number of Russian troops. They are moving away very, very slowly. We saw the withdrawal of only 3,500 servicemen in Crimea, and that was it. The rest remain at their positions, unfortunately. It is a serious situation, and I think that tension may last until the end of the military drills, at least until September. Russia built up more than 100,000 military personnel near the Ukrainian border and continues to maintain them despite a promise to withdraw troops, Zelensky said, adding that the tension on the border could continue. Zelensky said Ukraine's Western partners had largely contributed to easing tensions in relations between Kiev and Moscow, but recently their pressure on the Kremlin had eased, including the United States' decision to waive sanctions on the company behind the Russo-German pipeline Nord Stream 2. Thousands of French police officers protested near the National Assembly in Paris to demand the government get tough on violence against security forces, with some booing the interior minister who turned up in a show of solidarity. French police officers are increasingly often coming under attack when trying to retake control of areas deemed as no-go zones on the outskirts of many of France's largest cities. The discontent within the police will trouble President Emmanuel Macron, who wants to show voters he is strong on law and order ahead of next year's election, when the right-wing leader Marine Le Pen is expected to mount the biggest challenge. Police unions complain that the government is failing to protect officers from daily attacks that leave some afraid of doing their jobs in certain towns and cities. This can't go on any longer. We need to be protected. You really need to help us. It's getting worse. One officer could be heard telling Interior Minister Gérald Darmanin. The state of mind of policemen today is one of concern because exercising their profession is becoming more and more difficult. The risks are becoming bigger and bigger, and it's becoming very difficult to provide security to our fellow citizens with peace of mind. The protest took place after a month-long period that saw a policeman killed during an anti-narcotics operation and a police force employee stabbed to death outside her police station. Dozens of supporters came in support of the police force. These days we leave to go to work and we don't know how we will go back, in what condition or whether we will end up in hospital. We, policemen, all of us as policemen I think have been injured once, all of us have been in hospital. And this cannot continue. People must be made aware that we do not hurt policemen, firefighters and gendarmes. All of them must be respected. However, Human rights groups and ethnic minority associations have frequently levelled accusations of brutality and systemic racism against the police itself. Meanwhile, many police officers say that migrants entering France must accept the rule of law. First of all, today, policemen are being attacked. And when we attack the police, we attack the French people, which I am part. Secondly, a state cannot be organised without a police force that is respected. So, those who come to France, whom we often welcome with open arms, must understand that we live under the rule of law. The unions are demanding a minimum prison sentence for anyone who attacks a police officer. One protest banner read, paid to serve, not to die. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.